So it's been a couple of interesting weeks, hasn't it, in the world? So who, if anybody, we'll put on the microphone, would like to share what they're grateful for? Please, would you come, let me, I'll meet you halfway. So you need to tell us your name, your rank, no, sorry, your, your name and what you're, number. yeah. <laughs> name, rank, The first one I did, oh, I put everything. Oh, you walk that around. And then when she did the meditation, um, these are the ones that I put on another piece of paper. I put myself, love, compassion, life, security, kindness, goodness, fearlessness, help, challenges, and everything again. <laughs> All right. Ditto. Thank you. Ditto. 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 <laughs> Anyone else? We could just be done, right? <laughs> Sing a song and be grateful and we're out of here. Yeah, hi, my name is Michael Kennedy. I'm a new member here. And One week old. Uh, my gratitude is number one for, um, the daily word for today was just amazing. Um, that My gratitude comes from my family. And my family is not only my sister and my parents that have passed, but it seems like now more and more it becomes my family continues to get larger. My family becomes larger because of my church, because now you are my family, and my family is everywhere that I go and all the people that I meet. Not only that, um, I found uh, family continues to grow also um, through adversity, if that's what you want to call it. I went through a divorce and a friend of mine called me up and said, hey, you don't have anything to do for Thanksgiving. You're coming to our house. And this was a family that I've been doing this for pro over 20 years now, and this is going to be the first Thanksgiving that I'm not going to be there. And I am just absolutely... Because uh, where will you be on Thanksgiving? I'm going to be here. I'm cooking for my family here. So you're blowing off your friends. Pardon me? Are you blowing off your friends to have a Friendsgiving no. here? Uh, <laughs> she's giving me a hard time. I am. So... <laughs> And finally, you know, um, my, uh, my family continues not only um, for all of my friends and family, but I've also found that it's my work family. And for 15 years I worked for the federal government and I worked for FEMA. And any time a disaster happened, I would be sent um, to the disaster site. And I adopted all the people that were in that particular disaster that when people were asking me, you know, can you help them? I said, these are my people. They need help, and I was there to do it. And for that and many other things, I'm grateful, but thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Who else? Uh, oh, go back. Well, how about we go back first and then okay. come up here? Do you mind, Karen? No? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. I won't put you on the spot, but I know I, you have I something to be thankful for. <laughs> oh, really? I do. Oh, my. I'm, yeah. I'm Debbie Ocker, um, and Mike, thank you for that, because I also have a work family. I teach at Cocoa High and have been there for 30 years, so it is very much a blessing when you do go through things that you do have a family, and I was going through some hard times, and so this is now my family, so I want to say thank you. I'm mm. very, very grateful. Thank you. I didn't know what she was going to say. I just know <laughs> that we all have something to be grateful for. If not, see me after. You know, I always have something to say. And I could only get six things written down because I didn't have time enough. Okay, I am grateful for my husband of almost 54 years on Thanksgiving Day will wow. be our anniversary. I'm grateful for my family, for my church, Unity of Merritt Island. It has completely changed I mean, this isn't all written down, but it has completely changed my husband and me both. It's awesome. You guys are all awesome. And, uh, and again, I am grateful for my um, friends, and I'm grateful for being a clown to bring happiness and joy to others. That's been since 2004. And again, for, I repeated myself, my church family. Thank you, everyone. Love you all. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kim. So, Karen, can I use you as an example? Oh, yeah. Come on up for a minute. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, 
So one of the things we know is that Don is having some health challenges, right? Yes. So what Karen and I have been praying about and what we've been grateful for is that she has him to have a, another anniversary with, correct? Yeah. Yes. Another Thanksgiving. Yes. Another frustrated time, yes. right? Because he leaves crumbs on the counter, right? Or and whatever other happens in other places <laughs> that she has to clean up. And so we've been talking about how we shift our perspective to see the blessing even when our hearts are hurting. And so you are a magnificent expression of that. And we are grateful to watch you and witness this with you. Thank you so much. Yes, we love you. You all are so great. Because <laughs> it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Oh, if you need more of these here. <laughs> if you'll put those in the love offering, then we'll, we'll take them and I'll, I'll send a note to um, Silent Unity. But it's hard sometimes, isn't it, when, when you, life is happening or... ISIS has happened, yes? I'll say the word, right? Or whatever it is. The struggle I've had in my life for the last year was dealing with Unity Worldwide Ministries, and some of you know of that because I'm outspoken and I um, stepped over some boundaries, about 110 <laughs> of them. And so I've been in review. When, I, when you leave a church and you break your contract, you go into review, which is not a bad thing to do. And so the I will say the hoops that I've had to jump through over the year, it's, it's really actually been, it was a year in August. Um, it, you know, I, frustrating, and, and Rose has been there when I cried and all that, and I got word yesterday that I'm cleared. <laughs> Case closed, you know, all these words. So I, I texted my, my children, I said, so I've been cleared, and my son wrote back, and he's just like his father. He said, well, now that you're no longer a criminal, you are invited to Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where you don't know what the blessing is. I don't know what the blessing has been in all of that, other than, look, I get to be with you all, right? And help Reverend Rose out and, and, and do the things. But sometimes it's not so visible. It's not so visible. And so it, we can be there for each other, and we can call each other higher and remind each other, re, R-E with a capital M-I-N-D, what the truth is. And so this morning, you remember last week I was talking from Walter Starkey's book, It's All God? So this morning as I left, who's sitting on the porch with her coffee, with the book? She's like, you just so inspired me. I forgot how wonderful the book was. Here's Reverend Rose, you know, <laughs> reading this book. And so we don't know what blessings look like. And I don't, I've never even really spent time with you, but I know that we have blessings. It's just sometimes we have to take off our blinders and through tears admit right? We have people in our congregation in the hospital. Reverend Rose and I try to see as many of those as possible as often as we can. Um, and so their joy is that they're in the hospital still, right? And last night about 10 o'clock, I get a text from my daughter that my, one of my grand puppies has transitioned to heaven. I didn't even know the dog was sick. They didn't know the dog was sick until yesterday morning. And so... Um, they were, my son, my son-in-law is a, a small animal vet. He does cats, dogs, and fish <laughs> at Maybeck in Melbourne. And so they were, they took the dog in and they thought, well, we'll do the surgery tomorrow because he has family in. And um, it, then the dog, he just knew. He said, you know, it's time for me. Let's get the dog out of the house so the kids aren't around when this happens. And so at 5.30, he decided that he needed his angel wings. And so my grandson is angry. He's angry. He's still angry because Grandpa Lee died. So now you throw in his dog that he's known. And so he said, Nana, you know, I'm eight, and I already know of five things that are dead. And so what do I do? And I said, you know, I'll come over tomorrow, and we can talk about it, okay? And his Mimi is, um, goes to the Christian Science Church. So we, we kind of, when we get them alone, we fill them with prayer and things. <laughs> as Nana's and Mimi's can do. And so we will have to figure out how to get to a level of, eight, of an eight-year-old who's angry about losing a dog, but still angry about whatever, everything else he's also lost. And how do you do that? How do you see a blessing in it? And so for him, we'll talk about the times that he and Saba ran around the house and, and did whatever kids do with a dog. And so you take a moment, wasn't prepared at 10 o'clock to get that email, and figure out how will you then be available for somebody to show the blessing that is. 
because it's about our attitude, right? And it's always about consciousness. Reverend Rose always talks about consciousness here. And what do we focus on? So if we're going to focus on all that's happening outside in the world and not the truth of who we are, then we could have a pretty crappy week, couldn't we? Yeah? Crap is okay. That's an okay word to say. It's when the shift word loses a letter that you get in trouble. But they all happen. So how are you dealing with it when it happens? And one of the things that the Dalai Lama said this week is, you know, let's focus on ourselves and let us be the ones who are the peaceful people so that you're not honking at all this traffic now on Courtney. Isn't there a lot in this last year, right? So just be in the traffic, right? And all the northerners that come down because of the wonderful weather because it's already hit Chicago really bad. They, I was, yay, I'm down here and you're up there, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I said, I will deal with my Lion King hair and I will have no snow, you know. And so how do you look at things that are a miracle? We talk about those when we, when we study the Bible, and that's one of the things we're going to do next year is pick apart the Bible metaphysically. And so stay tuned for that class. How do we look at what people call a miracle that Jesus did with feeding the 5,000? You know, I remember as an early student, first of all, I never read the Bible until I was 32 because you don't do that as a little Catholic girl. So they're like, well, turn to page. I'm like, wait, what? Open it up. I'm wondering, what are all these ribbons at the top, you know, that you put through so you know where, where you are? Oh, I was, you know, talk about being made fun of and looking like a fool. You know, so how do you even open the Bible when you never knew it? And then what do you look at it? How do you look at it and place it on yourself? And that's how we teach it in unity, metaphysically. So what we know that Jesus did at least this is what the Bible tells us, is that he blessed the food before he created the miracle, what we see as a miracle. And that's what unity says. Bless what you have already. Because think about it. I know there's something that goes around on Facebook. If you got today only what you were grateful for yesterday, it, I, I wouldn't have a lot that I already have because I didn't, I didn't give thanks for everything yesterday. And so it's not about shame and guilt, but do you keep a log? Do you keep a book? Are you continuously looking at what you're grateful for? And I, I do. And so then on Thanksgiving, I go back through the year and see what I was grateful for. And sometimes it's just like, I am awake, you know. I made it out of bed, you know. The coffee was good. What, it doesn't matter. But get yourself going in this place of gratitude so that it shifts everything else inside of you. And that's how we prevent disease, by being grateful. I know this to be true. And then we think about what would happen when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Okay, so without the details and unpacking all that right now, he gave great thanks for Lazarus and all that he had done, all that he had been as a brother to Mary and Martha. So giving thanks beforehand. And that's why the talk is called, instead of thanksgiving, giving thanks. And people always say, you know, you're misspelling that. I said, and on purpose. And only always, right? So what um, Fillmore says is that a result of Jesus' prayer of thankfulness was an overwhelming manifestation of the power of God at work in what seemed to be hopeless circumstances. Next week, Reverend Rose will also talk about hope and faith. Those are the words that are for the first um, week in Advent. And we were talking about that yesterday. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, I prayed, but, you know, they still died. Right, because we're not in charge of people's soul's journey right? Doctors cure, prayer heals. And the healing happens within me. So before I go and see who, a couple people in the hospital today, I will be prayed up so that I am a prayerful presence when I get there and not bringing my angst because it's not about Therese. It's about the person who's being seen. And so therefore then I give great thanks that I can be grateful for the fact that I'm a little nervous, you know, and I sweat behind my knees and do stuff like that, even all with all the training, it's still okay. And the secret that gets me through each of those visits is I put a little VIX right here on my nose so that when I go to the hospital, my collective memory is not overthrown by the smells in a hospital. And it sounds silly, 
But when I first started doing all this chaplain work, it, I didn't know that. And so I'd go and it would be such a hard time for me and I'd get out and someone said, you know, if you just put Vicks there, it erases all of your collective memory of what you know has happened in your life in hospitals. So that's just a little secret. I keep a little jar in my car. Swap it on my nose. It doesn't smell too bad, you know. And you go in. Because how do we prepare to be who we've come here to be? when life is constantly, constantly, constantly throwing stuff at us. Or the news, right? So thank God we don't watch a lot of news. And I don't have my own TV, so um, we watch a lot of animated Disney at Rose's house. Because it's good. It's good. And so I laugh, you know. So scripture also tells us that we answer the call before it happens. That's why when you pray with Dixie here on a Sunday or you send a prayer request to the church or we are continuously trying to help you understand, pray every day, be grateful every day, knowing that that's what will steer your ship. And even though, you know, even with your teeth gritted, like, I am so grateful. I don't know why, but I'm really grateful, right? Or are you screaming like I do at the beach. Just do it and get through it. And that's what Karen and I had talked about, you know. How can we get out our anger or our frustration or all of those things that are really part of our humanness, right? Which is good and all good, and yet not really serving us, especially if we're trying to be in relationship with someone else, right? So Fillmore goes on to say, except now the realization that your good is already on its way to you from God, from spirit, from the universe. So now that I'm free to be a minister again, that in itself is very controversial within the unity movement, however, um, I don't know, what will I do? I don't know. And so um, I posted pictures of me, of birds flying, you know, that I'm finally free, you know, and, and there's all sorts of underlying connotations, of course. However, what do we do when we see that the gift of what we have asked for has happened? Because I'm not, I wasn't prepared. I thought I wasn't going to be free until January 1st. Well, guess what? I've got about 32, 30, how many ever days that is, 38 days extra. I better get myself on the move, right? And figure out, yeah, how to be grateful. So there's a story about a little girl who um, goes to bed at night, and before she does, she always says her bedtime prayers. And she blesses her mom and her dad and her brother and her sister and her animals and her relatives and anything else she can think of in that moment. And then she also, also always says, and dear God, bless you too, because if anything happens to you, we're all sunk. I can hear my eight-year-old doing that, you know. I mean, it, it's true. We think, we, we think it's outside of us. So that's it's something that takes a long time to understand that all of that gratefulness, all of that that changes the world, our world is really inside of us and our attitudes about that. So please be assured that, you know, God is a constant, ever unchanging presence. That's what I believe. You believe what you believe, right? Um, Martha Creek always says, don't believe a word that I say. You figure it out for yourself. And if it works, good. And if not, then change your mind. She also calls our belief systems BS. She's going to be here in March. You, oh my God, she's hysterical. So how do we bless what seems to not be whole or seems to be less than? So all week I have included anyone who has had a hateful thought. And I've put down ISIS. I've put down terrorists. I've put down all of those things. Because if I name them, then I look like, oh my gosh. But I have Muslim friends and they're not terrorists. And I have Christian friends who are not extremists, right? We all do. And so stop naming the religion, Therese, and just put down what you're grateful for. And so I include all of those. And today I wore my cross on purpose. I don't usually wear crosses per se because I think this week what I needed to remind myself is that in metaphysics we look at this as the crossing out of error thinking. So every time my mind goes to, oh, I wish those people would, whether it's the people at Publix or the people on Courtney in front of me or my family or everyone else besides Therese, then I've got to step back and cross out the thinking and get to gratitude and get to gratitude. And so that's what the cross represents for me. It also represents that this is us horizontally on this plane living on the world, right? And at any moment when we change our thoughts, we can raise our consciousness up. 
So that's the other metaphysical description of what the cross means, and besides scaring people. They're like, oh my God, you wear a cross? I'm like, it's not going to bite you. Don't worry about it, you know? So how do you, and I'm always shocking people, always shocking them, especially the ones I haven't seen in a while when they learn that I'm a minister. And so the, the last story as we close up for today is about a guy who owns a little food shop. So think about it. I've just started working at the Green Turtle. So it's a little store and he is so angry because a big box store is across the street. And he's so angry, and so he just, he's just so mad. He doesn't know what to do. He's going to go out of business. He just knows it, he knows it, he knows it. And so he goes to his church pastor or minister and says, you know, what do I do? And he said, well, quit being fearful of this big box store. And he said, what? What do you mean? How can I not be? He's got so much more than I do. My prices are higher. You know, all the stuff that we do, right, that we justify. And he said, here's what I want you to do. Every morning you go out in front of your store, you bless it. You give grateful thanks for anybody who's coming in, all of your supplies and all of that. Then I want you to turn around and bless the big box store. And so he does. And he does. And he does. And one day he walks back into the church and he says, well, I finally closed my shop. And the pastor minister says, so tell me, how has it been, though, that you've been blessing him every day? He said, well, I was hired to run the big box store. <laughs> Who would have known? I'm sure the big box store people were like, Who, what is that guy doing over there? What's, you know? And when he would go into the big box store, he was always nice. So what are you doing to cause the shift in your life so that you see the goodness and the blessing? How will you give thanks this week? for all of your blessings. And please tell someone that they are a blessing in your life and know that that is the truth about each of you too. So let's pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that we are, all that we will be, for all that this community propels us to be. The magnificent, beautiful, wonderful being to be you in this world, God, is our greatest gift. Thank you. We bless Rose today, her day of rest and Sabbath. Grateful for all who are with us in spirit. Thank you, God. We are grateful. Amen.